What's happening, Thought Nation? I'm Eddie from Rhetorical Thoughts, and today we're talking about the self proclaimed most epic channel on YouTube. What is up, Sharers? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my first ever vlog. I'm super excited. That's right, Carter Sharer. Now, before I go a little bit too deep, I want to prefix this entire video with two points. Point number one, I actually wholeheartedly believe that children's content is a key foundation of YouTube. I think in terms of always being advertised, or generally always being advertiser friendly and the amount of views that they attract, I think it enables, I think the, this foundation enables, you know, YouTubers that I enjoy to be able to make the more mature content, obviously for myself, um, in terms by, by supporting it. And secondly, after binging a lot of Carter's content, I've realized he seems like a genuinely nice guy. So I really have no hard feelings towards him. So I first became aware of Carter semi-recently when several of his videos kept popping up in the trending feed. And so one day I had enough of seeing these obviously clickbaity videos popping up and I decided to have a look at his channel to see what this guy was all about because I figured sometimes, you know, I can get a bit of a laugh out of the the ludicrous nature of some of these um, some of these vloggers I've never heard of. I did what I did with a lot of YouTubers, whereby I just looked at their oldest videos first and I worked my way up towards their most recent. Now, Carter's only been on YouTube for about eight, nine months, and the point that he's at already in terms of views and subscribers, hey, look, he's killing the game. So when Carter initially started his channel, it seemed like you know, you run in the mill family vlog. He's sort of dipping his toes in and out of different trends and different ideas for videos, sort of seeing what, what gets the most traction and blending in a little bit of the old clickbait in there. And whenever something sort of hits a bit of a, gets a bit of, gets a bit of traction, he sort of just, you know, beats it into the ground. And metaphorically. Originally, he was doing some epic bike jumps and stunts. He was doing... You know, videos with Nerf guns, modifying Nerf guns, doing a bit of some creative stuff, making different Nerf guns. Next, he moved on to RC cars, dabbling in a couple of different experiments and some dry, some stuff with dry ice and some really cringy pranks. Old mate even made himself a music video complete with fake Vivo logo and everything. This one is for the kids with imagination. Let's go outside, make a creation. Great ideas flowing out is what my channel's all about. So grab your gear, let's engineer. It's what I do, it's my career. So, yeah, he's, he's your run-of-the-mill vlogger. My favorite stuff I saw that he did is when he does what I like to call predictable content, whereby it'll take a lot of clickbait and a very misleading thumbnail to make you not know what's going to happen, where something like, we're dropping a watermelon from 45 feet. You know what the result's gonna be. This is gonna be awesome. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one, go! But look, in general, he was doing some stunts, some experiments, you know, a bit of mucking around with Nerf guns, a little, a few cringy little pranks. But look, it's the shit that I think kids should be watching on YouTube in a lot of ways. Not this kind of stuff. Hey, you're right. You Here, have... no rat comes into my house without oh getting taken. Oh my It inspires these little younglings to be creative. And look, I think, for me at least, it it's almost enough that it allowed me to forgive, as I said, his cringy pranks, his, their terrible acting when it comes to their reactions to a lot of different things. <clears throat> very over the top and very obviously fake. But I do have a problem with some of his more recent stuff. And it's how I first found him. His Safe Series. So my issue with this is the deception. The safe series is fictitious and only buried very, very deep in the description of each video is a small, small, small hint that this isn't reality. And yes, a 12 year old with a half functioning brain could quite very easily tell that this isn't real, but he's playing on the naivety of his fans for views. And look, Carter isn't the only one doing this, but he's just my current example for my issue with that a lot of um, family, there's a lot of vloggers and a lot of people on YouTube in general dabble in. So I think 
the key to my issue is how you present it. So, for example, when I was younger and I would watch shows like, for example, Drake and Josh, I believe that the way that shows like Drake and Josh were presented to and are presented to younger audiences enables them to be able to delineate between fiction and non-fiction. I think from a very young age we're sort of preconditioned to be able to separate what's real and what's not in terms of what we watch and what we consume. That's why shows like professional wrestling, which operate in this sort of pseudo-reality sort of thing, they have graphics at the beginnings and constant reminders throughout that these are trained professionals, this is just entertainment, these are performers, so that people don't get misled and it doesn't misrepresent what their product is. So when Mr. Olmate Carter Share represents in his vlogs some sort of fiction, fictional narrative, He's playing on this aforementioned deception. And you're probably thinking to yourself, hey look, it's no biggie to tell a couple lies in in a vlog, it's YouTube. And yes, I call them lies because you're presenting a fictitious narrative in a vlog which is presented in a reality format, so yeah, they're lies. But I, as I said, I have two sort of problems and they lean on the same, they lean on this one concept whereby I think that all YouTubers, whether they want to or don't want to, you create what is as what I consider to be aspirational content. You see, the accessibility of YouTube means that almost anyone is able to do it. If you've got a phone, you've got a terrible camera, you've got a computer, you can do YouTube. And most YouTubers are inspired by people who they watch. So my first issue sort of lies with the people who think that this is real. You only have to scroll through the comments of videos like this and like these other ones, whereby you see a bunch of very young kids just lamenting on their lives and feeling bad about themselves. You've got these kids who aspire to be YouTubers or who wish to live the life that you have but just end up feeling inadequate at the end of your videos. It's why I have this big overall general problem with the whole flex culture across all of YouTube and especially in in this sort of genre of family friendly sort of content. People like Guava Juice and all that just flexing on little kids. I, I don't I don't agree with that. And so yeah, you scroll through and you see these kids just feeling terrible about themselves and, and through these lies and this fake story that you tell, these kids walk away feeling like their lives are inadequate. You know, I never walked away from an episode of Drake and Josh thinking, gosh, I hate my life. I wish my life was more like them because I knew it was a TV show and I knew it wasn't real. And secondly, as your fans get older, still continuing on the aspirational content, you've taught these kids a lesson and they become just another another feature of this cycle of YouTube, whereby people believe that to be successful on YouTube, you need to lie and deceive people. And I'm not talking about, you know, just turning your personality up a notch or maybe exaggerating a few things. I'm talking about outright lies presented as reality. That's a pretty fucked up lesson to be teaching some kids. How do you fix it? I don't know. A warning? Maybe add an intro, a themed intro, like you'd see in a TV show. Maybe be a bit more upfront about the fact that you're, when you're, when you're, you know, moving into the fictional realm of your content. Or, fuck, just stop doing it. Just quit with the lies, avoid the fiction. Because look, in all honesty, Carter, in terms of what I've seen, you're one of the good ones. I don't want to find out one day you went, and went along and filmed yourself a dead body or some bullshit like that. And real quickly though, before I, before I finish up this video, I've seen, in my, in like doing a bit of research for this and looking up, watching a bunch of different videos, I saw a bunch of different um, YouTubers sort of mocking this sort of stuff. And I see, I've seen it for other YouTubers as well. And I don't understand why you can mock a bunch of Carter's content, for example. I think you got these people sitting up on these maturity pedestals thinking they're all fucking high and mighty by like taking, trying to make fun of the stuff that he does. But you know, that's like comparing Blue's Clues to Breaking Bad. So to the people doing that, go fuck yourself. Anyway, for rhetorical thoughts, I'm um, Eddie. Um... And the question of the day is... Is this racist? Leave your answers in the comments below. I'll pick my favourites in the next episode. Um, like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. Um... See you next time, rhetorical thoughts. Ah!